Welcome to the Backyard Bounty Podcast from HeritageAcresMarket.com, where we talk about all things backyard poultry, beekeeping, gardening, sustainable living, and more. And now, here's your host, Nicole. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Backyard Bounty. Today, we are joined by my friend, Drake Larson, who's an attorney here in Pueblo, and he has been gracious enough to answer some of our questions about bees and some laws regarding beekeeping, specifically here in Colorado, and um, he will hopefully be a regular member of our show. But I know that people that are new to beekeeping, there's a lot of questions about, you know, what if the bees were to sting my neighbors or... What if they try to sue me for something? So he has all the answers to all of our questions, and he's incredibly entertaining. So let's get started. Hi, my name's Drake Larson. I'm an attorney here in Pueblo, Colorado. Normally I'd say beautiful Pueblo, Colorado, but if you're from here, you'd know I'm lying. (laughs) I I have a loft practice here. I do family law, but you've conned me into coming here to talk (laughs) about bees. Pure con movement, yes. Yes. And, uh, and, and, and like we talked about, I feel like you're, 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 you're putting me in this, this box, this two dimensional box. And you say, you're a lawyer. So do lawyer things, talk about lawyer things. And I don't want to do that. I'm resisting that. So (laughs) I'll do a little bit just like to placate you, but that's not what I'm here for. It's not for me. It's for the listeners. Well, they don't want to hear about it either. (laughs) The law is super boring. Um, no, bees are far more interesting. So I'd rather hear you talk about them, but uh, I'll, I'll do my part. I'll do my part. But like like we talked about, I feel like like when they have a new guest on Sesame Street and and there's Elmo and they're like, "What are we doing today?" And then they just like pan like 2 inches to the right and there's some guy in a suit and they're like, "Who are you?" And he's like, "I'm an attorney." And then like anytime they need an attorney, they're like, "Let's go talk to attorney Drake." And then like he's living in a garbage can or something because that's what attorneys do. And so I don't want to be that guy. Um but for, but but you I really put you in something other than a garbage can. Then? Yeah, please. Yeah, um, but I am a real attorney. I'm really really licensed to practice law. But and you play one on a podcast. And I, and I play one on a podcast. Um, <laughs> but but yeah, for those of you that don't believe me, I really I really do. Um, do you want me to like go into my life history? Sure. Okay, so I'm from the the actually beautiful city of St. Paul, Minnesota, which I actually really like, and you should go to it. Um, And I lived there my whole life until I met my wife, who's in law school, was in law school, and she brought me here to Colorado, in Colorado Springs. That's my story. I'm not a native. Please don't hate me. Well, um, so we have our lukewarm coffee that is stronger than anything, than anything. I don't have a a completion to that. It's borderline espresso. It really is. It's It's like a, 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 what what do we say, a quinta, quinta shot? Penta shot. Penta shot. Penta shot, yeah. It's basically that. And Mm -hmm. so we're ready to go. We're jazzed. We've got all of five minutes to do this. So (laughs) let's just jump on in. Yes. Okay. So my favorite second date, and this is like real. I've really put thought into this and it's far more interesting than bees. So hear me out. So there's this little mall in in Minnesota and it's called the Mall of America. It's quite small. It's the largest mall in North America, I think. (laughs) I think is its claim to fame. And it was in my backyard. It was like 20 minutes from where I lived. And so I went there like occasionally and it wasn't that big of a deal. It really isn't. But people go from like across the country to see there like literally and it's not there's like Saudi princes that visit and stuff and it's not worth it but anyway it's a big mall and inside the mall is uh, a theme park it used to be called Good. Camp Snoopy which was the shit because Camp because Snoopy was from Minnesota oh. um, but now it's Nickelodeon Park I don't know it's dumb <laughs> um, we all still call it Camp Snoopy but anyway the my favorite second date and I have a 50% success rate with this date I've married one woman of two <laughs> that I took on this date um, which is Pretty good. Pretty good odds. Uh, it's to take somebody to Camp Snoopy in Mall of America. And there's a science to it. I, okay. I'm i not a scientist, but I am a doctor. Uh, there's a science to it. And the idea is... So, like, on your first date, you need, like, a fast getaway. Like, you go on a first date, and sometimes it's not, you're not connecting. And so you just gotta run. Okay. So you don't, you don't go to Camp Snoopy on a second date. That's weird. Unless you, like, want to kidnap somebody. You don't do that. <laughs> But, like, on a second date, presumably, you like the person to some degree and they like you to some degree. Otherwise, they would have said no. Sure. 
And so the idea is, is Camp Snoopy is surrounded by the largest mall in the world, and so you can literally do anything. If you want to get coffee, you can do that. If you they have movie, th I think they maybe have like two movie theaters. They have a movie theater in there. They have laser tag. They have mini golf. They also have like roller coasters and stuff. <laughs> and so like I I've decided, generally speaking, going to a theme park is the best date possible because you have these moments of like sitting in line, being bored, and like talking. And then, like, but you're, like, close, and you're compressed, and you can, like, idly touch the person in, I don't know, an awkward way, depending on how charismatic you are. <laughs> I am not, so it's always in an awkward way. Uh, but then, but then, right when in the awkwardness is, like, reaching critical mass, you then go on a ride, and you, like, flush your system with endorphins and stuff, and then you, you go back to waiting. And so I think, like, I think it's the perfect formula. I feel like you've put a lot of thought into this. I ha put a lot of thought into everything that I do. <laughs> and, and that is one of them. And actually if Jessica's listening, she probably is. She'll correct me. I think it was actually our third date that we went to Camp Snoopy. So you're flawed. Well, okay, so it's the perfect third date then. Oh, okay. We can we can edit this. It's fine. We'll make it work. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. She she knows these things better than I do. It's either the second or third date. But it worked. It worked. I've taken two women there and I married one. It's a perfect those are really good odds. If you want to get married, go to Camp Snoopy with a woman. Is my advice. <laughs> That's it. That's my advice. Duly noted. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, now, if you're living in Colorado or somewhere further from Minnesota, it may not be cost effective to mm -hmm. do that, but... I mean, unless you're super interested in the person. Yeah, but you... you shouldn't be that interested on a second date, because then you're mm, a stalker that's... or a serial killer. Valid. No one should be interested enough to travel across the country for a second <laughs> date. That's weird. Hey, can I lock you in my truck and take you to camp? Y yeah, <laughs> that's that's weird and unhealthy, and, and I don't believe in that. I mean, if that's your thing, go for it, but it's not mine. Um... <laughs> but but yeah so go visit Camp Snoopy brought to you by Camp Snoopy <laughs> which no longer exists uh yeah so what alright so Drake <laughs> tell me about the liability of owning bees on your property what if they sting a child in the eyeball great question Nicole I'm really glad you asked that question see you you need me to be your co-host I need to just put your ass on my back and carry you <laughs> to a successful podcast yes. <laughs> Case. All right, I got you. Well, great question, Nicole. Let me answer that with a litany of boring legal terms. I'm sure it'll be less than boring. Well, all right. Thank you. You're, you're so sweet. So we're going to talk about torts really quick. I'm going to break it down. So torts are when people sue pe other people. Citizens sue citizens. And a citizen can sue another citizen at any time if they cause any damage at all. If your dog bites somebody, they can sue you, period. And if you own bees... All right, actually, strike that. I'm going to reverse it. Every legal answer from every lawyer ever is exactly the same. And I'm going to give you that same answer. The answer to your question about the bees stinging the toddler's eyeballs is it depends. It always depends. There's no black and white answer. But technically, if you own bees and they sting somebody, you may be liable for the damage. Um, I'll give you, I guess I'll give you the short answer. The short answer is, is that you may be liable for the damage if they can prove that your negligence caused your animal to harm them. And the issue there is whether or not it's your animal that harmed them. If you're in a place that has bees, presumably there's native bees and wild bees and other bees, and Nicole, you can speak to the wildness of bees, I don't know. But if somebody gets stung by a bee, just because you own bees nearby does not make you liable for their stinger unless they check the, the bee and see that you painted the stinger pink because that's your favorite color. <laughs> so so proof, proof that the bee belonged to yes. you. They need to link the damage to you. And so they need to prove that it's your bee, which is challenging. basically next to impossible. I guess if they could testify that they literally saw this particular bee fly from the hive. Here's a question. Do you own the bees or do you own the hive? If a wild bee comes into your hive, is it your bee? Is this a question for me? Do you know the answer to this question? Well, a wild bee is not just going to be invited into a hive. Oh. They will kill it. Okay. All right. So then if somebody were to see a bee come out of your hive, not being chased by every other bee in the hive, but just floating out lazily, and then this bee floats over and stings the toddler in the eyeball, and they watched the entire trip and it came from your hive. Have you ever they... seen a bee fly? It'd be very hard to track. I mean... I'm just saying it's technically <laughs> possible. If they track this thing, I mean, if it makes a beeline, right, that's why it's Naturally. named. Yeah. Um, and they watch it, then presumably they could say, I saw it come out of your hive, therefore it's your bee, therefore it's your damage. So there is a way to be sued. Um, 
However, interestingly, at, oh, actually here, let's take a side, a side step. I'm only licensed to practice law in Colorado. If you're in any state outside of Colorado and you're raising bees, this advice may or may not apply to you. Rather, I can't legally give you advice. Almost every state has very, 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 very similar, nearly identical laws. And so it probably would apply, but I don't know. So don't quote me, please. But anybody that lives in Colorado. But anybody that lives in Colorado that has a question about bee law or any other law, please give me a call. I promise I'm more well-informed than I sound. And we'll put links to your contact information in the description. Let's put links in my contact description (laughs) in the... Yeah, what you said. Let's do that. (laughs) I, uh, yeah, please. If, if you're anywhere in Colorado, call me and we'll talk and it's free and I'll be entertaining or something. Um, and, and I'm trying to think that's, oh, anyway, so, so I, this is only applying to Colorado, but interestingly in the state of Colorado, as far as I can tell, there has not been a single lawsuit about bees or about bees stinging somebody, or at least not one that's been appealed. And so there's no case law and there's no statute. There's no statute that says it's illegal for a bee to sting somebody because that wouldn't be in a statute to be in case law. And there's no case law. So if your bee stings a child and they sue you, let's make history. Let's do it. And contact Drake Larson. And contact Drake <laughs> Larson. Yeah, thank you. Uh, <laughs> but it's not super likely. It's not something you should be really worried about. Which is, I, I almost find that surprising the way that people can be sometimes that they have not uh pursued bee sting i mean somebody sued mcdonald's for hot coffee yeah but the real problem is is that part of the you don't sue anybody unless you have real damage if a bee stings you and you go ow for an hour you didn't have any real damage even if you took that to a judge even if you could prove all the liability you'd get like 50 bucks or less and you'd pay a whole lot more than that to your attorney so people don't do those lawsuits. Now, if somebody died because they were allergic to bee sting and there was like a death involved, wrongful death, then that would be money. Sure. Which I am a little surprised that there hasn't been something like that. Well, I just did a post on anaphylaxis and bee stings, and it's 3 to 5% of Americans, I guess is related to the study, uh, are anaphylactically allergic to bees. So it's a very small number. The and, chances of anaphylaxis are minimal. And if you get stung by a bee and you experience anaphylaxis, how, I mean, are you going to die unless you get one of those EpiPens? Or, like, what's the, what what happens there? Um, anaphylaxis can be fatal, yes. You need, uh, generally speaking, an ambulance and a doctor in an emergency room because we need to give you epinephrine and Benadryl and things that more than an EpiPen and a Benadryl pill need. Isn't the Epi an EpiPen? I mean epinephrine? Yes, synthetic adrenaline. Are you saying that my epi- EpiPen is not the same as your EpiPen? We don't carry EpiPens. Oh. We carry concentrated epinephrine. <laughs> epi needles? Uh, vials. Vi- oh, vials. We have 1 to 10,000 and 1 to 1,000 concentration, depending on one's for cardiac arrest and one's for anaphylaxis. Okay. there You, you heard it here first, folks. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway... But it's not like if you're even if you have this issue, if you get stung, you're not like guaranteed to die anyway. Correct. So it's like three percent of Americans would have to get would have to be near your property, get stung, not be able to get help, and then die. Yeah, statistically, it's unlikely. Yes. Also, the other thing to consider, and this isn't like the best news your listeners want to hear, but the other issue is that lots and lots and lots of lawsuits get settled before they get to hearing. Mm. And so, if somebody ever sued, I mean, it's not I'm not saying that nobody's ever sued anybody over bees because they probably did, and they probably just had a settlement. Sure. And so, there's just no case law about it that I can read. Um, I didn't think about that. That's Basically, good. it means that both attorneys were too a chicken to go to trial and see what happens, so they just decided to settle it outside of court. So it means it hasn't really been proven or tested. Um, so there is some concern for liability, but it's pretty minimal and pretty isolated. And frankly, anything you do in your life has some concern for liability, like when you drive a two-ton car down the highway at 85 miles an <laughs> hour, or 110 if you're me. <laughs> um, <laughs> which is incredibly stupid. Um, so yeah, life gives you liability. So just enjoy it and have bees. I so, guess, and this Nicole, you can speak to, but you can put like bees, your beehive, like in the center of your property. How, what kind of range does a bee have from a beehive? Depends on the literature you read, but uh, what about the literature the bees read? Well, they don't read. Oh. <laughs> okay, well, I'm just wondering why the literature you read changes how far a bee can travel. Well, I think it's hard to put little GPSs on them and ah. figure out how far they go. Again, the beeline issue. How, yes. So they will forage 
like between two and five miles from the hive. Oh, okay. But queens, when they go to mate, they've tracked them as far as nine miles. So unless you have like a five mile property, your yeah. bees are likely to go into somebody else's yard. Yes, but again, prove it's mine. Right. Well, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm just okay. So there's really not a great way to keep your bees out of somebody else's yard unless you're a millionaire. Yes. There's certain things that you can do to to maintain um, neighbor relations. <laughs> for example, for, what, for what example. can you do, Nicole? What, what, what are some steps you can take? Well, I was placing a host hive on a client's property, and the neighbor, whom she had not met before, came out and was very upset and said, is that a beehive, and why are you putting it there? Because it was on kind of the fence line between her place and the property. Mm -hmm. And granted, it was more open. They had more land. Um, I think they were like maybe five acre lots so they it wasn't super close but the neighbor nonetheless was um apprehensive at best so uh we just moved the beehive to the other side of the property um so as to not aggravate aggravate said neighbor so um you know you could just be a decent human and move the hive so it's not so close again face the entrance so that it's not facing the neighbor's house so when they come out of the hive they don't buzz your neighbor's front door um you can put up a screen to keep the bees um so that they can they come out and they have to fly straight up to keep their bee line from interfering with the neighbor's property but um you can't keep them from visiting your neighbor's flowers or their swimming pool or hot tub hot tub or bird bath or things of that. <clears throat> but there's steps you can take to minimize the amount of bee harassment. Yes. Okay. Well, and that actually ties really well into my general advice that I give literally all of my clients. And the idea is, is that if you are a mature grown ass person and you know how to communicate and be decent, you don't need attorneys. You won't have liability. You can get through life without ever needing an attorney. Probably. And what I mean is, so many, so many people come in and talk to me and they say, hey, this jerk down the street did A, B, and C, what do I do? And they always want to hear, oh, you can sue them and get a, mil get a million dollars. And maybe you can, usually you can't, but maybe you can. But almost every time, the better answer is just go talk to them about whatever they're doing. Be a decent human being. They'll respect you and also be a decent human being and you don't need to pay an attorney. As much as I like being getting paid, you, if you're decent people... You don't. You, you can usually solve your problems. Now, there's some issues like divorce that even if you're decent people, you may need an attorney. And if you're like a criminal, you may need an attorney. There's there's other things, but generally, if you're a mature, intelligent person, you can get away with it. Which is what you were talking about, where if you just like talk to your neighbors and try to facilitate their needs in some way or another, it's probably a good move. Well, just because you're mature doesn't necessarily mean that your neighbor's going to. Well. Be that's true <laughs> and that yeah and actually i have that good thank you for pointing that out lots and lots of my clients are mature responsible nice people they're not all jerks in fact most of them are responsible nice people because they end up interacting with jerks and mm -hmm. you can't choose your neighbors and that that happens there's god there's lots of awful stories about neighbor disputes people yeah. people get real crappy to each other they do unfortunately um so that's true but either way you can minimize your need for an attorney by just being a decent human being and being thoughtful and like you were saying don't put the beehive right on the property line. That's better. In fact, if you can shroud it in trees so they don't even know you have a beehive, that mm -hmm. could be even better. Um, do bees like trees? They do. However, the hive needs to be exposed to as much sun as possible to minimize the likelihood of the small hive beetle. W wow. Okay. I was going to ask if they needed photosynthesis, but the small hive beetle. Yes. Now, is small describing the beetle or the hive? The beetle. Okay. So it's a small... Okay. It's a hive small beetle. Hive, sm small hive beetle. Okay, got yes. it. And how, how, <laughs> how large is this beetle? Well, it is small. It's a small hive beetle. <laughs> Good. I couldn't have answered it better myself. Thank you. <laughs> have you already done a podcast on bees? Am I, like, encroaching on, like... I have not... Overdone I, I have not spoken on bees yet. Okay, so like this is the tester. People are going to be like, I'm really interested in the, the, the SHB. Tell me more. And then you'll have a whole episode on SHB. Yes. And I will just get the hell out of here because I really, really don't want to talk about SHB. Well, we can talk about that another time. <laughs> but okay, cool. That's the thing. I didn't know. I did not know you needed sunlight. Interesting. Yes. Okay. So you can't fully enshroud your, your apiary with trees. Accurate. Okay. Good. Good. Well, hey, we learned a little tiny bit about law. So, 
I'm not like totally rapping, but we should start rapping. So like, I really, 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 I'm sure you do too, but I really encourage people to like email me with random questions. Like hit me up. I, I, I can, I'll try to do my very best to answer anything you have, literally anything. And if there's like ever an interesting email, we can like turn it into a podcast. That would be cool. That would be cool. So yeah, my email will be on the link and please don't like spam me, but, but email me. Well, we can put your email for lawyerly related questions, and then if anybody has suggestions for topics or things for us to talk about, they can send it to our podcast email. Oh, is it our podcast? Yes. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> Hot damn! <laughs> I'm in! All right. In like lit. All right. Yeah, no, that's that, that makes sense. Um, and we can talk about more legalities at another time. I, Yeah. I'm really good at talking about that. No, I'm just really afraid that legalities are boring as hell. And if people are, like, genuinely interested, I can, like, I do have a really, really cursory overview. I can teach people about whatever. I like teaching, so we can do that. I think there's a lot of interest. I see a lot of it online. People worried about neighbor disputes and liability insurance and just the what-ifs and the, the trying to cover all their bases before they get a hive and or place it on property and or... Something like our host hive, where we put it on other people's property. Yeah, and the, and like I was saying, the unfortunate thing about the law is that there's no answer. I can't tell you if what you're doing is going to cause liability or not. I can say it's more likely than not or less likely than not. My answer will always, always be it depends. And so, like, I can help take steps to avoid li- or, like, minimize liability. But basically, if you own bees, there will be some liability. Just like if you own a dog or a small toddler that's prone to walking into things. There's going to be liability. So, yeah, even uh, having anything, having anything (laughs) will give you a liability. Unless you sit in a cabin in the woods all alone, you're going to have liability. So just get over it and have bees. That's that's my legal advice. (laughs) It's good. I like it. Yeah. Thank you for listening to Backyard Bounty, a podcast by HeritageAcresMarket.com. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review. If you have a question you'd like us to answer on the show, please email us at ask at heritageacresmarket.com. Also find us on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube at Heritage Acres Market. All the links mentioned in this podcast will be included in the description. See you again next week.